This is my Ender 3. I've done videos on this and reviews, and this is the new Ender 3 Pro. It's $100 more than this guy. Is it worth it? I'll let you know my opinion on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. This is my original Ender 3. It was donated to the channel by Banggood.com for me to do a review, and I did a review, and I made some improvements in several videos, but I want to compare the base features of this $179.99 3D printer to this $279.99 Ender 3 Pro. First thing you may notice is it's got a removable bed. It's got a build tack type material, although it's not actual build tack, I've verified with them. It's got a magnetic backing and it's flexible so you can pop the prints off and it puts your bed back in place. The stock $179.99 bed has again a build tack type material, although not actual build tack, and it sticks to the aluminum bed. You can't remove it. So if you like that removable flexible feature, that's one thing you get for extra $100. Another thing they changed is the frame for the Y-axis. On the base unit, it's a 40 by 20 extrusion, so 20 millimeters wide for the wheels to balance the bed. On the Pro, it's 40 millimeters wide, so definitely a little more stability. The 40 millimeter wide is the same as the CR10 Mini and the CR10. So this is definitely a better setup than this here. So what else do you get? power supply upgrade. This has a Meanwell power supply, which is a known brand. You can buy this actual power supply from reputable companies such as Mouser.com or others for about $30. So you could upgrade yours, but I don't know who supplies this power supply, but this is a known power supply from a company that I trust. What else did they change? The bed down here is flipped or the frame down here is flipped for the electronics so now your SD card is at the top rather than down at the bottom where it was before so it's a little easier to get to the SD card but the electronics inside it's the same electronics that's here the only thing I noticed is that they added a little more hot glue to the connectors so I don't think there's any real difference here it's the same board no bootloader on this it's the same 128.4 AVR chip, uh, so it's, it's really no difference. Now I added this full size SD card to mine through an adapter, so it makes it easier to install or uninstall, plus I like the full size SD card. Plus the fan that was on top that I covered with a 3D print is now on the bottom so pieces can't fall into it. Although there's not a lot of space for that fan to blow air out, so I'm not sure it works as well as it would on top, so I wonder how effective that is. I honestly can't see any other differences between the 279 and the 179 version. So are these worth a hundred bucks? This has a magnetic base that I'm told cannot go beyond 85 degrees C because then the magnets start to deteriorate and the magnetic lines on this bed make it actually a little bit difficult to line up. It wants to jump around. If you get it off just a little bit on one side it hits on the bed or on the power supply back here. So you gotta get this thing aligned properly and it wants to fight you. The fact that you can only go to 85 degrees C, if that's really true, I haven't tested it, but that's a limitation that this guy really doesn't have. So was that extra $100 worth it out of the box? Well, let me compare it to mine and the improvements that I made. The first thing I did is I added a glass bed. You can get this for about $22. I did a video on it and it's got a nice speckled surface that once it cools, the prints pop right off. And it's removable because I clip it onto the bed. And when I don't want to use glass, I can still use the BuildTech material. So there's like $22 extra I spent. I also added this full-size SD card adapter, which costs $10 plus a 3D print to mount it. So there's another, let's just say $15 there. So be, now I did add Capricorn PTFE tubing because it's better than what comes stock on these things and I also changed the couplings I did a whole video on this on the CR10 and all the couplings that come stock in these guys They're just not solid couplings So I replaced that plus the PTFE tubing and I added this EZR Which I haven't talked about yet. It's gonna be in a future video. I Changed the extruder to this EZR and now I can print flexible materials. This guy's about 30 bucks 
plus the PTFE tubing, plus the couplings, I probably got about another, let's just say $50 in this right here. If you total all that up, it's around $87 for everything that I did. If you want to improve the power supply, you can get this exact power supply on the Pro for about 30 bucks at various sources. So I could add that too, and then I'd be about $120 more for this exact machine. But the real question is, is it worth buying the stock versus the Pro? And how well do they print? If this is a Pro, does it print better than this guy? Well, let me show you the differences. I printed a calibration cube on both of them. I took the glass bed off. I actually took off the easy arm, put the stock extruder on it. So that was all the same, but I did leave my SD card. I didn't think that affected the print quality. And I'll tell you what, I can't tell the difference between these two. If I didn't mark them, I wouldn't know what the difference was. They look identical. So there's no difference to me in the calibration cube. Then I printed a Benchy. And seriously, I didn't mark them. I don't know which one's which. They look identical to me. So as far as print quality, calling it a pro, I don't see how it's worth an extra $100 unless you like some of these features that I put on it and you don't want to do any modifications. So in that case, maybe it's worth $279.99. Personally, I'd go with the $179, make the modifications you want, maybe even buy some extra filament. You got an extra hundred bucks to work with if you don't want to do all the improvements that I did. I love that there's two versions. I just don't see that it was worth a hundred bucks to do all these improvements. I think they're just trying to make more money because this one is sold too cheap. But in that case, maybe you should try and grab one of these before the price goes up on these because it may not last. I have no idea, but $179.99 for this is well worth the money. I still prefer my CR10 Mini over both these, especially $279.99. For $10 more, I can get a CR10 Mini with a bigger 300 by 300 by 220 build area. And to me, just a better overall frame. But that's me. That's my choice, and I did a whole video on that. I'll link to it up here or at the end of the video. But $279.99 to me is a little bit high for this guy. I do have a link in the description below with a coupon for a $30 off, I think it is, from Banggood.com. If you are interested in this, at least save some money if you want this one. I got a link for this for $179.99. What I like is it comes from a U.S. warehouse from Banggood, so you can get it in like two to three days. You don't have to wait for it to come 15 days from China. But if you're interested in this printer, my opinion is this is worth $179.99. The extra hundred bucks is really not worth the extra hundred bucks. That's my thoughts. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.